Hello to everybody. Welcome to Asia Creative and Innovation Channel. I'm taking you to the lab at Knowledge Capital in Osaka in Japan. My name is Keisuke Inami, today's moderator and the master of ceremony of the program. Taking you to the lab and you will be invited to join this program starting from this exhibition. So this place is called the lab, the world's best laboratory together one of the core facilities inside Knowledge Capital. As you can see, there are lots of exhibitions in this place. They are from companies, universities, and research institutes. And they are exhibiting their latest technologies, prototypes, and technical samples or service samples to demonstrate them on the general public. For example, this is called the virtual band you can enjoy experiencing playing the guitar or other musical instruments through the AR technology. And also, you can manipulate the virtual drone by using the head mount display. As this, you can fly the virtual drone in the real space you are seeing in front. So this is a kind of the idea of the participatory living lab. And of course, there are special staff of Knowledge Capital called communicators who are stationed here to interact with the general visitors and collect the feedback, which hopefully is a candid one, and fed them back to uh, the companies and universities. So today we are taking up uh, the topic, which is something related to this living lab. And we are inviting you to the program of Asia Creative Innovation Channel, or ACIC, from now. The venue is all set here in Active Studio, so please enjoy and stay with us until the very end. So thank you very, very much for joining this evening or this morning or this afternoon. And good afternoon or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching this channel. This is ACIC hosting uh, the program by Knowledge Capital. And today uh, we are taking up, as I said, a topic related to the living lab. But just before getting down to the real program, I'm going to introduce a little bit more in detail about Knowledge Capital. So Knowledge Capital is a core facility of Grand Front Osaka, which is the, the huge complex located in the north part of JR Osaka Station, the one of the largest terminals in Japan. 2.5 million passengers are traveling daily throughout this area. And as a core complex or core premises of this uh, Grand Front Osaka, Knowledge Capital is located here in the bottom part of the North Building, ranging 88,200 square meters of floor surface. We are equipped with various functionalities in the urban complex for innovation and creating new values. Knowledge Capital was established in 2013 as a field for creating new values through exchange of various knowledge from companies, universities, or research institutes, and also including the general public, the, all the participatory programs and throughout the interaction, we are generating new values through the activities. Our key concept is the fusion of human creativity and technology resulting in new value creation. In the past, the innovation only represented by the is only represented by the idea of technological achievement. But here at Knowledge Capital, we are integrating technology with human creativity, such as art, design, and creativity. So the new value generated here at Knowledge Capital can be represented by the new or improved products, but also uh, the new services or technical uh, examples of the new achievement, but also the social ethics or communities that can represent it as a new value of knowledge capital. In order to facilitate such communication uh, of the different angles and different perspectives, uh, we are integrating all the elements on all the participants of the society, not only the professionals represented by the researchers, scientists, creators, or business people or artists, 
but also the non-professional, such as uh, families, uh, senior citizens, children and students. So that all the uh, integration of the participatory programs of knowledge capital is underway here at the premises. As I said, Knowledge Capital is equipped by various facilities and functionalities. Starting on the left hand, le upper left, uh, the Knowledge Salon is a members only salon. This is uh, symbolized as a place for meeting and, and getting to know with the new members or potential partners in the future. We also have the different types of offices called Collab Offices or Collab Offices Next or Knowledge Office where project leaders can deepen their thoughts and they can generate the, or new, create the new prototypes of their services or technical samples. Once those samples are ready, we have, as we saw, the lab as an exhibition space for further interaction with the audience or the general public. For the further or larger scale of the audience interaction, we also have a convention hall or conference rooms or the big atrium called Knowledge Plaza. So in a way, Knowledge Capital is a one-stop ecosystem for creating a new innovation and new values for all the people uh, who are willing to do so, to work together with other partners. So with the collaboration with international partners of Knowledge Capital, uh, we have been implemented a lot of activities. And this Asia Creative and Innovation Channel is obviously one of them. And it was initiated by seven uh, international partners of Knowledge Capital. And today, Knowledge Capital is the host. And we are presenting the Expo 2025 Osaka, Kansai in Japan, the overview and the master plan. And of course, uh, the presentation is not only by me, but also uh, with a special guest today. So here in, with me, uh, we have a special guest invited to be ready for the presentation. Uh, Mr. Dai Habata, the director of the Policy and Planning Bureau from the Japan Association for the 2025 World Exposition. And thank you very, very much for joining this evening or this afternoon. Oh, well, perspective is everywhere in the world. Thank you very much for joining and a warm welcome to Knowledge Capital and ACIC today. Yep. Uh, thank you, Inami-san. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I appreciate that um, uh, I am invited to this uh, precious opportunity. Thank you very much. Well. Frankly, is mm -hmm. this the first time for you to visit Knowledge Capital? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it's my first time to visit here. So yeah, it's so kind of exciting place for me. Hope you enjoy the kind of short visit mm -hmm. <laughs> just before the. Obviously, we had the lab and other parts of Knowledge Capital, mm -hmm. but just the time was confined, so we only saw the lab mm -hmm. today. How did you enjoy the lab? Uh, yeah, there are kind of various uh, exciting and innovative and artistic uh, experiments. So, yeah, and they are very playful. So, yeah, I'd like to bring my son uh, oh, the other day, <laughs> yeah. Right, thank you very much. We're looking forward to mm -hmm. your family visit, but also as an organization as well. So today, uh, the aim of the game, of course, is that the main uh, guest, uh, Habata-san, is with me. And first of all, we would like to have a presentation from Habata-san uh, regarding the overview and master plan of the expo. Mm -hmm. So Habata-san, floor is yours. OK, so yeah, <coughs> again, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dai Habata, and uh, I'm from the uh, Japan Association for the uh, 2025 World Exposition. And so uh, before diving into my presentation, uh, I'd like to uh, show the short movie regarding the expo. So please play it. In 2020, the threat of COVID-19 spread across the globe. For people around the world, it has been a year of thinking deeply about their everyday lives, the structure of society, and life itself. Although this pandemic has been a true test for humanity, it is also an opportunity to create an even better future. 
holding firmly to this belief, a diverse range of co-creation in advance of Expo 2025 Osaka Kansai has begun picking up speed. The Osaka Expo's core concept is the People's Living Lab. As preparations move forward, Mr. Inoue Shinji was appointed Minister for the World Expo 2025. As head of the headquarters for the World Expo 2025, the minister will spearhead the preparation that lies ahead. Over 1,000 specific ideas in areas including a digital society, robotics, AR, artificial intelligence, medical care, and the environment have been gathered from the private sector. We have begun considering their implementation while sharing the vision of Society 5.0, a national project being promoted in Japan. Producers in charge of venue design, operations and themed projects have all been selected and publicly announced. As leaders in their respective fields, they will take center stage in accelerating co-creation, not only in Japan, but also with the rest of the world. 特に今の時代、そのこのパンデミックの時代である意味こう分断が始まるんですけれどもこういう時代だからこそあのつながりを持ってさまざまな生きとし生けるものが共存し合うっていうような未来に向かって一歩踏み出すそういう知恵の結集が万博にあるんだということを示さなければいけないと思っています。今コロナ禍の中でテレワークが進みロボットや CG エージェントを用いたアバターの利用が期待されるようになってきていますこの万博でアバターをたくさん導入して世界中の人が気軽に参加できるそういう仕組みを作ることができればその先に広がる新たなロボット社会の可能性を世界に日本から見せることができるんではないかと考えています Fueled by this concrete progress, momentum in Japan continues to increase Local governments are meeting to prepare for pavilion setup, and the official logo was unveiled in August. Work on the venue has entered a new stage, and the preparation to ensure that the expo can be safely conducted on an artificial island is progressing. 2025 will mark the halfway point for achieving the SDGs. In Japan, where a culture that greatly values coexistence with nature and sustainability has taken root, and more specifically in Osaka, a city brimming with life, the people of the world will come together to celebrate what we have achieved and further accelerate our progress. The Expo of Co-Creation, where wisdom, knowledge and passion will come together in powerful synergy, is just four years away and excellent progress is being made on preparations. Right, so that was uh, the video of uh, working in progress of the preparation of mm -hmm. the International Expo. So that will be followed by the presentation yep. of Avatar-san. So please show it on the screen. <coughs> yes, thank you. OK. So yeah, <clears throat> as mentioned in the movie, uh, so for now, the, everything is under uh, preparation. But today, I'd like to uh, disclose as further as possible. And so uh, let me uh, introduce along with the slides. So. <coughs> So this page shows the total outline of the Expo 2025 Osaka Kansai Japan. The main theme is designing future society for our lives, which is broken down to three sub themes, saving lives, empowering lives, and connecting lives. The main concept is people's living level. We hope the new technologies and systems will be introduced for implementation at the Expo site. The venue will be Yumeshima, an artificial island at the Osaka Bay. As seen in the map, uh, the island is already there. Regarding the period, the expo will open on April 13th, 2025, and will be closed on October 13th, 2025. Projected number of visit is approximately 28.2 million, including 3.5 million 
from overseas. This page shows the organizations for the Expo 2025. The government of Japan has the headquarters for the World Expo 2025. The chairman is the prime minister himself, and the vice chairman is minister for the Expo 2025. We, the Japan Association for the 2025 World Expo, were established January 2019. This is the only official organization to plan, prepare, and manage Expo 2025, working under the direction of the government of Japan. Our association is composed of staff members dispatched from the central and local governments, as well as business community, which includes members coming from different backgrounds like construction, transportation, travel agencies, and trading companies. This is showing the location of the expo venue. Three airports, including Kansai International Airport, Kobe Airport, and Itami Airport, and Shin Osaka Station of Shinkansen provide very efficient and comfortable access from all over the world. And we can travel from the center of Osaka to Yumeshima Island in about 20 to 30 minutes. This is also showing an um, access to Yumeshima Island. In terms of access by road, you can access the Yumeshima Island by bridges from the north, which will be expanded from four to six lanes, and also from the south through an undersea tunnel, which is already completed. The undersea tunnel also enables us to extend the existing subway that will connect the city center and the island. This is showing the picture of Yumeshima Island taken in January this year. The expo site is shown inside the yellow line and the new station for metro will be at the center of the island. The central part of the, the expo site will be the pavilion area. This shows the milestone of our project. On December 1st last year, at the BIA General Assembly, the registration of the Expo 2025 was officially approved. In addition, the, the Expo 2020 Dubai is scheduled to be held from October 20, 2021 to April 2022, one year later than the original plan due to the corona pandemic. We have only three years or so between Dubai Expo and Osaka Kansai Expo. The main theme of the Expo, Designing the Future Society for Our Lives, aims at supporting the progress of SDGs set by United Nations. The target year of SDGs is 2030, so the year 2025 for our Expo is an ideal timing to share and integrate all the solutions developed in all over the world. It is also an ideal timing to start thinking about what we should do beyond SDGs. This is showing some images of the venue. It will be designed so that visitors can think and discuss the main theme, designing future society for our lives. Here comes our key concept, people's living level. Our exposition shouldn't be just exhibitions, but also include various experiments so that people can see touch, and enjoy future society. To elaborate further on designing future society for our lives, three sub-themes have been established. There is saving lives, empowering lives, and connecting lives. Saving lives focuses on protecting the lives of individuals. Empowering lives focuses on enriching the lives of individuals and expanding their potential. And connecting lives focuses on getting everyone engaged, building vital and sound communities, and enriching society. Regarding the sub-themes and SDGs, official participants, including 
participating countries and international organizations should select one or more sub-themes and deal with one or more SDGs. This figure shows examples of specific topics that pavilions for official participants may explore. This is showing the zoning of the pavilion ward. The pavilion ward will be zoned into three sub-themes zones, saving lives, empowering lives, and connecting life zone. And this is the concept of the logo. So this logo was selected in August last year and attracts a lot of attention. So uh, personally, I really love this logo and uh, it's so cute, I think. So what do you think, uh, Inami-san? <laughs> About that. Yeah, I, I, I really remember the time that was released or at least open to the public, and I was shocked by the kind of red circle and the, the eyes, you know, staring it, as if they were staring the future. So this is so vivid and vibrant at the same time. It's a nice logo. Mm -hmm. I like it very much. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. So this is very uh, attracting the uh, public, I think. So this is the, I think, symbol of the. Uh, the Expo 2025. So this is showing the people appointed as producers of this Expo. Two of them shown on top of the list provide uh, venue designs and the remaining eight producers provide thematic designs from various <laughs> focus viewpoints. Um, this is showing the list of senior advisors, people representing Japan's top artists, academia, and entertainers are now ready to guide us. To name a few, Ando Tadao, the world-famous architect, and Ikenobu Senko, the headmaster of flower arrangement. So that's my presentation as a whole. So thank you very much for listening. Right, thank you very much for your presentation. And of course, uh, representing the kind of Japan Association of the 2025 World Expo, mm -hmm. I think it's sometimes to, uh, to get asked a question, but it's really difficult to mm -hmm. answer because you have kind of certain limit that you can say as a kind of official uh, spokesperson. So today uh, I really appreciate your participation because I know how hard and difficult it is to, to be in the public place and speak about the World Expo and, and that was clearly stated in the presentation and thank you very very much for your participation. So of course uh, as a knowledge capital uh, we are working uh, together uh, during the stage of attraction the expo itself. So for example, the delegation of BIE uh, presented in the, in the slide as well, uh, led by the Secretary General, the Dimitri Kekensis, uh, also uh, visited the knowledge capital uh, when we had a kind of uh, attraction promotion on the whole. So even after the, the World Expo is selected in the, in the Kansai, Osaka Kansai, Knowledge Capital conducted uh, several programs in relation to the World Expo, mainly promoting the, the citizens' participation and provoking more uh, discussion and interaction for the World Expo. For example, uh, we gather the university students and uh, we get some uh, tasks and discussions and through workshops we created some of the ideas uh, what kind of things we would like to see in the pavilions or in the expo venue. Or other than that, as I explained, we have a knowledge salon, the, the members only uh, salon here in Knowledge Capital, and we hosted a sort of uh, salon of the word expo. So the people registered here are giving some ideas and do some discussions for the kind of the same topic, like we would like to, what kind of expo we want. So I understand uh, this expo is more a bit like a citizen build-up model, not like top-down model. So uh, I would really like to get, get you asked more questions about the, the, the entire uh, programmings and so on. 
And of course, you can answer as much as you can. <laughs> that's that's the, the underlying concept. So please understand the, the, the viewers and audience of this channel. OK, so uh, my first question is about uh, the participation of the general public. And of course, uh, as, you, as you said, uh, there's a venue and there's a pavili there are pavilions in the venue site. But not only uh, just, just exhibition, um, what kind of uh, things that people who visit it there uh, can uh, experience or can feel as a world exposition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, so uh, as mentioned, uh, so now we are on the planning. So uh, there are some limitations mm -hmm. uh, for me to say something officially. But uh, as far as I can say, the, first of all, the concept of this expo is uh, people's living level. So based on the concept, uh, we envision that the visitors uh, will get a kind of uh, glimpse of future societies mm -hmm. uh, that will be possible uh, through the kind of several experience uh, with experimental several initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only just uh, the pavilions or the kind of some events, but other kind of facilities or the any activities. Yeah, so yeah, we are now planning about something like that. Okay, so the entire planning is underway, but uh, this is more bit of the representation of experience mm -hmm. and experiments yeah, definitely. at the same time. Yeah. Right, so you can take a glimpse mm -hmm. of the future society yeah. through the activities mm -hmm. of, the, of the World Expo. That's Definitely. exciting. Well, thank you very mm -hmm. much. So I, I, I literally spoke about individual, like if I mm -hmm. go there, mm -hmm. what kind of things I can experience. But I, I believe there are some corporates or associations mm -hmm. or other organizations who are interested in taking part mm -hmm. in the World Expo in, in some way. Mm -hmm not only just for the sponsorship mm -hmm. or but, but kind of activities. Do you think uh, the, the door is open for such uh, entities? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. So uh, regarding that point, uh, we also are planning uh, details. But I think uh, it's really open to the uh, various entities for joining the, not just participating, but kind of uh, creating mm -hmm. the expo. So including, uh, as you said, uh, organizations, associations, mm -hmm. companies, and also individuals, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we are planning to announce something more details. Yeah, in You're the, planning. Yeah, <laughs> in Very the future, nice. yeah. It's, it's so nice to hear. I really like the words, like, uh, you can participate in the expo, but you can also create the expo. That's mm -hmm. the very important concept. Mm -hmm. And I am really impressed by the, the phrasing mm -hmm. you used. And I'm just giving some extra nudge to, mm -hmm. to say something on word. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, like I, I had a look at the individual mm -hmm. and the corporates and association. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, the, the, the organization in other countries mm -hmm. outside Japan? Mm -hmm. So like international partners, uh, any chances of participating in the process of the World Expo? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I think um, we haven't any uh, kind of publicly announced mm -hmm. uh, the details, but uh, I think I suppose uh, it's open to also to the uh, international associations. Yeah, so I think uh, we yeah sorry, but we are also planning uh, <laughs> and preparing for the, about that. Right. Uh, yeah, as well. But I think I believe it's open to the any entities in uh, international or the other countries. Yes. Right, so it's important for such uh, companies or organizations to, to keep an eye mm -hmm. on the kind of official announcement of the World yeah. Expo. Please, At yeah. some point, mm -hmm. there might be, I'm not saying there is, but there might be mm -hmm. some open calls yeah. or a kind of announcement mm -hmm. about such thing in yeah. the future. Thank you for your consideration. Yeah, yeah it's, I just, yeah. I just, you know, highlight it as might be. Yeah. But, yes, but it's uh, this is a kind of the willingness of the attention. Mm -hmm. I already sense from the international partners mm -hmm. of Knowledge Capital, so they are also uh, interested in, you know, taking part mm -hmm. in such activities. And I really, really 
promising you mm -hmm. know, attitudes, isn't it? So uh, I, I just took a look at the, the participatory scheme, mm -hmm. but uh, let me get down to more bit of, of what we can see uh, at the expo. Mm -hmm. So you explained that this is a, a showcase as well as the experiment. Mm -hmm. So, and also this is the kind of implementation mm -hmm. of the future society. And do you see any uh, concrete ideas of the, the technology mm -hmm. or experience that will be implemented mm -hmm. in, the, in the future society context? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we are thinking, heard about, also about that. And uh, so, for example, we are discussing that uh, there will be an idea of flying cars, mm -hmm. uh, which are expected to become the uh, kind of next generation of mobility. Right. Uh, yeah, so I suppose uh, if, you can, if you will visit, uh, you will see or the kind of uh, take a ride. Take a of, ride. Yeah, <laughs> flying cars, I think. So we are planning about that right. at the expo. Also, uh, not only just the mobility field, but also the environment field. Uh, there is the idea of the uh, uh, demonstrating or the uh, implementing technologies that will contribute to the uh, carbon neutral society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so these the are kind of uh, specific themes of the categories right. of technologies. So I suppose there are several uh, domains mm -hmm. or the fields of industries or yeah. technologies that you are particularly looking at mm -hmm. as a kind of implementation of the future society. Mm -hmm. right. And one is, is mobility, mm -hmm. is a kind of future possibility of the mobility that mm -hmm. can be flying in mm -hmm. the air. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, that would be exciting mm -hmm. to see because from perhaps our generations, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the flying cars are the thing we saw in the films, mm -hmm. and about you know, this is going to be mm -hmm. happening in, in or well, this might be happening mm -hmm. in the World Expo as well. So that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the kind of digital transformation is one of the hottest words mm -hmm. uh, in the current society, and given the circumstances, um, the COVID pandemic mm -hmm. also accelerated. Uh, the, this digital transformation mm -hmm. activities or, or kind of schemes in, in every angle that like companies or like societal uh, issues. And uh, what about the, the plans of the kind of participation in the, the World Expo via kind of virtual platforms mm -hmm. or kind of augmented reality platforms mm -hmm. or other technology implemented? Yeah. Um Right. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I think uh, the situation around the world is uh, rapidly changing due to kind of this uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, uh, due to that, the online or the virtual experience or the virtual communication is now uh, rapidly endorsed. And so in that point of view, uh, we are also planning to uh, utilize kind of virtual technologies uh, for our expo, mm -hmm. and so uh, as a fact, uh, in the master plan we uh, uh, we made last year, uh, we are uh, saying that the, we are planning to hold a virtual expo, mm -hmm. utilizing virtual technologies like VR, AR, or the kind of digital twin technologies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with these kind of uh, technologies or the virtual expo initiative itself. Uh, we are aiming to um, invite all, everyone in the world, right. literally. Right, yeah. yes. Uh, the virtual platform enables mm -hmm. us to, to participate in the, the World Expo, mm -hmm. no matter where we are. Yeah, you, so right. like at different parts of the globe, mm -hmm. you can also participate in some way mm -hmm. and do, do something in, yeah, in the World Expo. That would be really exciting. So uh, I'm not sure whether you, you have a kind of practical uh, examples mm -hmm. of, of, of how it looks or things like that. But actually, uh, as activities of Knowledge Capital, uh, we work together with the Osaka City mm -hmm. and also the Osaka Prefectural Government uh, to host or co-host mm -hmm. a kind of program of, of thinking up the virtual idea, mm -hmm. like a virtual Osaka Pavilion, for example, or kind of virtual characters. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that can be implemented or that can be uh, working mm -hmm. as a kind of iconic figure of the virtual mm -hmm. uh, export or virtual knowledge capital in this context. So uh, that was also the very interesting uh, approach for ourselves. We received quite a lot of entries mm -hmm. from the, the, the public. So that already shows how much people are interested mm -hmm. in this you know, World Expo and in this program as well. So this is the, the literally the, the, the opportunity for us to get mm -hmm. to know about the World Expo as well. So thank mm -hmm. you very much for your session today. Mm -hmm. And just before or closing uh, this session, I will let you speak out loud one last time about mm -hmm. yourself and also the message uh, who are watching uh, this uh, channel and this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time today. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are planning um, the expo very hard and it's now kind of under construction. So uh, I suppose we're, we, we're kind of uh, introducing more details uh, in the very near future. So uh, I really uh, appreciate for listening and I hope uh, we will meet at Osaka 2025. And uh, so please participate or and co-create the expo uh, toward 2025. Thank you very much. Right, thank you very much for your participation once again. Uh, just to, to, I'm glad to mention that we are in the same generation, <laughs> just the, yeah. what, which we found out uh, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and yes, uh, the World Expo is supposed to be the, the kind of co-creation field and the kind of forum that everyone can join and enjoy. And I, I personally will have a very close line on, on the programs and uh, announcement farther on. Okay, so thank you very much. That was the, the end of today's, uh, the main program, uh, the presentation about the Expo 2025 Osaka Kansai Japan and the overview and the master plan. And uh, Asia Creative and Innovation Channel, or ACIC, continues to the next week as a following program. So next week, uh, we are going to have a live streaming from Bangkok uh, which is hosted by the Creative Economy Agency. So they're presenting about, can we, can we get a slide uh, for the coming, thank you, okay. So uh, the host again is the Creative Economy Agency in Bangkok. Uh, as I said, this is next week and starting at the same time as today, uh, the 8 p.m. <coughs> here in Japan, uh, which is GMT plus nine. And they're presenting about the Bangkok Design Week 2021. Uh, as you might know, the Bangkok Design Week is one of the largest uh, design festivals in Asia. And also Knowledge Capital participated uh, the previous editions of Bangkok Design Week as an exhibition and some of the interactive programs. So as the 2021 edition, uh, they hosted this Bangkok Design Week hybrid style, and we are uh, tracing the feature of the Design Week on the whole. So please join the next week's program as well. Uh, and also this uh, ACIC is, is continuing for the following weeks as well. So please join us in a later in this program, and this uh, program will be archived for uh, later viewers, so if you're interested, uh, please share this URL uh, for your potential uh, interest partners. And thank you very, very much for joining uh, today. I uh, hope you enjoy the program. And as Habata-san said, uh, hopefully we will see you uh, here in, in Knowledge Capital or in the World Expo 2025. So once again, Habatsan, thank you very much for thank joining. Much. And thank you very much for watching. And see you next week. Bye-bye.